see that. that. It's not New York. Our city looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, it's a hell of a lot cleaner and loaded with Canadians. Oh, guess what I saw, eh? I'm here for the second largest film festival in the world, the Toronto International Film Festival. Gotcha. Toronto! Welcome to the Toronto International Film Festival. What do you think the main differences are between Americans and Canadians? We are much more polite, I feel. Bullshit. Canadians say I'm sorry a lot. Their accents. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What accent? The accents that are very sexy. Toronto. Toronto. We're uh, good here. Toronto. I think we're more educated. Oh, and more knowledgeable. Me think so. Toronto. There's no film festival. festival. I'm going to speak Canadian for a second. I want you to tell me if you understand what I'm saying. Can I tell you about my film project? I have no idea what you just said. When you say about, um, <laughs> It's not like a boot. A boot? About. About. That sounds weird now. Toronto, eh? Tell me the correct usage of A. When you want a statement to be made into a question. Yeah. This a? is really nice weather. A. Toronto, A. Toronto. But no one says the two. I'll say it wrong. I'll say Toronto. Not Toronto. Not Toronto. Oh, Toronto. There you go. This is the Toronto International Film Festival. You're watching Festival Pass with Chris Gore on Star Cinema. Toronto is a movie town. They make a lot of films here, but more than that, they love to watch it. And every September, this city becomes a movie mecca for Canadian cinephiles. In fact, they've been flocking here for 28 years to see the latest and greatest at the Toronto International Film Festival. The Toronto Film Festival is a premier festival in that it is a non-competition festival and it's emerging as, as one of the, the favorite festivals in, 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 in the film community. It's a spotlight uh, springboard, if you will, for movies to get attention and to generate uh, a buzz. This festival packs in over 300 killer movies in just 10 days. Sure, they show a few big studio films, but the real focus in Toronto is a schedule brimming with cinematic gems from around the world. I think it will usurp Cannes, because Cannes the last 10 years has been, programming has been kind of lackadaisical. It's not really in sync with what film buffs really like to see. The only real downside to a festival this huge, there's almost too much to choose from. Indies, docks, and big budget crowd pleasers. These are my top choices from Toronto. I've narrowed down the selection to six standout films. I call them Chris's Picks. Hollywood North exposes the pitfalls of filmmaking in 1979 Toronto. Why do you think people are so interested in movies about movies? It's amazing on television how many uh, shows break the, the, the fourth wall and show uh, backstage. You're good, man. You are so good. You would have killed me at that distance. Well, we need something to hold me off. Or, 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 idea. I could take that balcony with a swan dive. In the film, you're an actor who plays an actor. I wanted to make Scott DeMarco, who I play, a really bad actor. He's a really bad actor. But he's a star. He's a star in America. He's an action star. You're choking my rope, right? I'm Scott DeMarco. I'm an action figure. Those are stunt boxes out there. It's simple. I do it all the time. No. The answer is no, and that's final. Jennifer Tilly is perfectly cast in the role of the sultry lead actress. I sort of did a parody of the sulky starlet that thinks she's a lot more talented than she actually is. And I sort of put in a little bit of subtext that she's worried about getting older. And she's always having affairs with the co-stars that are over when the movie's finished. You were really good. <laughs> I want you to make it love to me. <laughs> What did you do to create the, the authenticity of that world? The costumes really did most of it. Yeah, and that hair, that hair is something. 
I could have just gone back into my own wardrobe. That blow I think. I've got some of those like late 70s things I saved. Like an idiot, I saved them, but I saved them. I'm about to introduce you to the junket. In layman's terms, media cattle call. Stand by. Cool. Um, Tango. OK. We're rolling. That's big. I have a little color in the face. Let's go. <laughs> what is your name, please? Uh, Chris Gore, G-O-R-E. So what exactly is a junket interview? Well, from my perspective, it amounts to a whole lot of waiting around in hotel hallways. Are you waiting for him as well? Uh, yes, but I, I don't know what oh, order they're doing everybody in. Reporters from all over show up by invitation of the movie studios. Chris Gore has arrived for Star's Encore. In hopes of getting a couple minutes with the star du jour. We'll read the press notes. My PA smuggled in the camera to get this footage, but we were immediately told to turn it off. That's right, you can't shoot in the hallway. He secretly turned it back on while I prepared my questions. When my turn was finally up, I was shuttled into a room where a celebrity waited to rattle off the exact same canned answers. How did you uh, come to be involved in this project? I was thankfully sent the script. Sent me the script, liked the script, told the agent liked the script, negotiated, came here. I could only fire off a couple basic questions. Telling us the story of the film before someone pulled the plug on the interview. It says the end, which must be the end. Great, Anthony, thanks so much. This little card that says wrap up. While the junket interview isn't exactly my style, usually it's the only chance to talk to the likes of Anthony Hopkins or Gary Sinise. And I couldn't pass on an opportunity to talk to Dawson's Creek star, Katie Holmes. So I headed to the Four Seasons and got in line with the herd of media and waited my turn, again. Turkey, gravy, um, mashed potatoes, of course, and cranberry sauce, which is easy. Just open the can. Pieces of April contains all the ingredients of a big indie hit. Shot in just 16 days on a shoestring budget, the film draws you into the quirkiest moments of family dysfunction. It's kind of a comedy drama about a girl who's making Thanksgiving dinner for her family. A girl who, who has no business trying to make the Thanksgiving meal. And uh, for a family who has no hope that she can actually even do it. We're going to have a very nice time. You don't actually believe that. It's possible, I think, yes. There had to be some real family moments, some adversity that you that you encountered during the making of the yes, film. We, Was we, it all? we had really one, we had a terrible day. The <laughs> last day we were using the car, the last day the family was filming, we were going to film the Krispy Kreme drive through scene. Welcome to Krispy Kreme. May I take your order? Just Thank remember, you. everybody, April was cooking. We'll need an extra dozen glaze. The car broke down. So we had to flatbed the truck to the Krispy Kreme. We got in that little station wagon, and we were ready to go, you know? And it, that, we never left the station wagon pretty much for most of the movie. We'd lost three hours trying to get the car so we could have the little moment where they ordered the Krispy Kremes at the drive through window, which to me was the entire reason for the film. Peter did a great job balancing. You know, it's, it's, a, it's very dark humor, and it's, it's not really a dark story. It's just, it's one that really kind of pierces people. The tone of this film shifts dramatically from, you know, you're in tears, you're laughing. You laugh how did you cry. Exactly, exactly. But how did you how did you guys mix that? That's what I love about the movie though, is that and that's one of the things that the, the the rhythm of it that way is very much what drew me to it, is that every time you thought it was about to get sentimental, somebody would say something horrible about somebody, which is much, much more like life. For days, I've been trying to think of nice April memories, and I can only come up with one. She was just gazing out the window, and she said, oh, mother, don't you just love every day? That was me. What about the crayon drawing she did of the Mayflower, the one you had framed? That was me, too. Cut it out. Have you ever made Thanksgiving dinner yourself? No. I, I'm always supportive in the kitchen. You know, I'm, I'm the taster. I taste the stuffing every year, Wednesday night. And um, I bug my mom. I'm always dipping in, you know, helping warming things up. But I usually, I haven't helped yet, but perhaps this year after I've done the movie. 